Hello and welcome back to Freddy in the Shed. On this video, I'm going to show you how to find and download Chirp on your computer. What is Chirp? Chirp is a really useful piece of free software for reprogramming these very popular little handheld radios. I'll be using this Retivest RA79. You've probably seen this radio in other forms, other, other clones. It's very popular on the internet at the moment, but this will work on older radios like this UV5R and also any other handheld radio that Chirp supports. What I should do on this video is I'm gonna go through the whole process very, very slowly, one step at a time. I do appreciate that a few of you, it will be too slow for you. You might even find it a little bit patronizing, but some people do struggle with installing new software and getting it to work with these radios. And it can be very, very frustrating if you're in that situation. It makes you wanna pull your hair out if you're lucky enough to have any left. So I will be doing this very, very slow. Let's now get Chirp installed on our computer. Now a lot of you can skip this stage, but one or two of you might struggle, so I'm gonna go through it. Firstly, go onto Google, type Chirp, and we want the first program that comes up. We don't want the aviation one below it. Click on that. Now Chirp is a free program. It's brilliant and I'm glad it's free, but there are a few pop-ups that come up on the screen and they seem to offer you downloads. Uh, don't click on any of these because you'll be installing other software. The small nondescript link that you want is halfway down the page when it says download the latest Chirp next build here. So click on that. Again, be aware for any pop-ups that might appear on the screen. Now Chirp normally automatically finds your operating system version of Windows and you can see it's highlighted in green. We just click on that. Now nothing really will happen. You th you'll think nothing that, that's happened but it is actually now downloading and if you generally go to the top corner of your screen you should be able to see the download. Once the download has finished you can click up in the corner here to load the program or otherwise it would have gone into your download file and you'll find it there. It's worth noting that Chirp will not automatically put a shortcut on your desktop so you might have to go into the search bar there type in Chirp and then the program will pop up. Now Chirp is evolving almost on a daily basis so it's likely when you go back to this program you'll find an update is available. I strongly recommend you get the latest version. So here is the standard RetiVest cable with the Kenwood 2 pin port. I did try, I've got another generic cable here that I've used for both phones. I did try it with the radio and it worked. But to be honest, if you go on Amazon, there's really not much difference between the price of the genuine one and the cloned version. So that simply goes into the side of the radio. The pins are different sizes. You can't get it wrong. That only goes in one way, but just make sure that you really do push it home because it does get a little bit snug on the case of the radio. And there we go. Now then, if you plug this into your computer and you switch your computer on, your computer will not yet recognize the radio. You, there is something else you have to do. You have to download a driver and that is available free on the Retivest site. It's a prolific driver. Let me just show you how to do that. So I'm using a Retivest radio, the RA79. It's this, this is the same for any radio, but we'll go to the Retivest site. We'll type in RA79 to find the product. And here it is. We click on that. Now what we're looking for next to where it says buy in blue, you'll see support. Here you've got the operating manual and everything, but we want the firmware and software part here. And then the third one down there is this is the prolific driver and this is what we need to download and this will download into our download file on our computer or we might be able to pick it up on the corner of the screen but let's go ahead and download that so this is what the zipped folder looks like in your download folder when you open it the one we're looking for is the second application here the one up from the bottom and we go ahead and we click on that and we can run that straight away. Yours is going to look slightly different because I've already got that prolific driver installed 
on my machine but anyway you, you get the idea once you've clicked on it it will disappear you won't even know it's there but hopefully it will work now we've got the driver installed when we plug in this USB cable we should hear that window sound there you go and when we unplug it we should hear the same sound so if you hear that you know that your driver's installed and everything's going to work okay. So we're nearly there now. We've got Chirp up and running on the computer. We've got the prolific cable downloaded and recognised by Windows. So just make sure that that cable is firmly pressed into the radio. You can switch the radio on at this stage or you can just follow the on-screen instructions. Right, let me take you through the on-screen on instructions and then we can download and program the radio. Once in Chirp, we go to a radio we then choose download from radio now mine automatically comes up as the ra79 because i've used it before but you'll have to scroll down a list here and find the radio you're trying to use then we go on to port and we can select the com port that hopefully the computer has recognized once we've got those settings correct we can click ok and download from the radio the thing I like about Chirp is normally this works straight out of the bag. If you do get any error messages or it loses connection with the radio, just try again. Okay, so this is what's on my radio. These are the 16 PMR channels, which I'm going to show you how to put on yours in a moment. Just look along the other columns. You'll notice I've cleared everything down. These may or may not be populated depending on the programming on your radio. The only ones I've got left is NFM that's set for narrow FM then we've got the spacing step which is 12.5 for analog which is 6.5 on digital and then finally we have the power that I've set to high next we need to find those 16 channel PMR frequencies the easiest way just go to Google type in PMR frequencies I quite like this radio trader website that comes up first on the list so I'm gonna go on there and then as you see as we scroll down the screen these are the 16 analog PMR channels with the correct 12.5 kilohertz spacing to load the new frequency all you need to do is drag it and then copy it from the website and then go into chirp now I made a mistake here because I didn't clear the cell box first I just copied it straight in and as you can see I've then had to go back and clear the first frequency so make sure that the cell box is clear by the time we got to the third one I'd worked it out you just need to highlight the cell so it's in blue and then a the new frequency pastes straight in you then need to simply do this for the rest of the 16 channels now remember before I said check the other cells are all clear you don't want any privacy codes or anything set like that and then finally just make sure the channels are set to NFM that's narrow FM and then the step rate is at 12.5 and not at 6.5 which is the digital setting there's one last final thing you may wish to do you can go ahead and name each channel in chirp some radios will display this and some radios won't but it's probably worth doing at this stage we're now almost ready to upload these channels to the radio but one final thing to look at is the settings tab on the left hand side this will show all of the radio parameters now depending on which radio you're programming it might be different to what you see on the screen quite useful you can for example unlock the RA79 here if you want to transmit on the PMR band so yeah it's worth going through you can just adjust and modify the radio and set it up exactly how you would like it once you're happy with all your options and choices we can go ahead now and click radio and then upload to the radio you'll notice that all of the comm settings are the same you shouldn't get any problem with chirp I generally find it works straight out of the box um, if you want to save these radio frequencies so you can program another radio exactly the same you, there is an option you can go in and save this to a file just name it whatever you want but everything now should be uploaded to the radio and you should be good to go on your 16 PMR channels. And there we go, we can go ahead, unplug the radio, 
And when we switch it on, Welcome, channel mode one. all of our 16 PMR channels should now be in the memory. I just hope that video was useful. I do apologise if I took it too slow for some. You may have found it a little bit frustrating. But I do know from my own experience, sometimes when you're learning something new, you can get lost along the way. And then the whole process really does get fuss frustrating. I've never really had much problems with Chirp. The only issues I've had is sometimes if I've used a, a different cable and a different USB port on the computer, I have to manually set the COM port. It doesn't always choose it automatically. So there you go. I hope the video has been helpful to you. If it, if it has, please give me the thumbs up down below. Perhaps leave a comment. Let me know what you think if I can perhaps improve the video in the future and I might come back and do that but as for now as always cheers thanks for your view time thanks for sticking with Freddy in the shed stay safe and catch you on the next one guys oh, yeah.